This is a velvet ant. It's actually a type of wasp. That's a female velvet ant. Those things have a pretty good bite. And we'll segue right from the velvet ant to the visible satellite photo. This is the NASA Polar Orbiter in full color, and it shows us two distinct regimes. See this dividing line right there that divides rich tropical air, see that cumulus, those cumulus streets blowing northward, from relatively clear air north of the Red River and into the Panhandle. This is all just cirrus debris from storms last night. And the rest of it's pretty clear and that's because of that cold front that we had come through over the weekend. That pushed south and that's the dividing line that we've got in between. Oh yeah, this area in southeast Texas, see those area of storms uh, around midday? This is a close-up look. Again, this is about noon and this is all sea breeze activity. See that line right there? That's the sea breeze kicking northwestward from the Gulf Coast, moving on inland. It triggers thunderstorms along it and uh, you see new cells going up as it passes through. And that's the reason why when you go through Houston in the middle of summer, usually early afternoon, you have showers in the area. That's that sea breeze just moving on north and up into the Huntsville and College Station area later during the day. Usually weakens and uh, dissipates about that point. The soundings indicate that we've got a lot of Rich low level moisture in South Texas right there. Pretty moist all the way up and some decent instability. But if we go up to North Texas, the soundings are a little bit different. I'm gonna, yeah, let me move this north or <laughs> upward. We've got a dew point of about 70 degrees there at Fort Worth and it dries off pr pretty quickly right above the surface at 6,000 feet, becomes very dry, dry air above that. That's that push of cool air we had over the weekend. You can see it right there surface chart showing the surf the southerly flow becoming reestablished across Texas in between there's that dry line or act, not dry line we have a new cold front coming in from Kansas the old cold front kind of died out in this area and this is the new push of cold air out behind that northerly winds and ironically 96 degrees back behind the cold front 90 92 you may ask uh, what's the reason for that well if you look at the dew points they're pretty low this is like 55 58 it's a lot easier to warm up dry air than it is to warm up moist air. 67, well 59, that's not too bad, but yeah, very high dew points out in this area. So the heating is a little bit more pronounced north of that boundary. Out in the northwest part of the Texas Panhandle and in New Mexico, we got upslope flow. If we look at the streamlines, you can really see it there. Easterly flow pushing off of 3,000 foot MSL terrain into the five, 6,000 foot terrain and that helps give us some lift and produces showers and that kind of thing. There they are, this is all upslope flow from Lubbock up to Al Albuquerque. In between this is the old front, let me change the color a little bit here. There's the old cold front, this is the new cold front and there's the sea breeze activity. So pretty easy to dis differentiate all these different patterns. Coming up for this week, uh, we start out with today's five, uh, 300 millibar pattern. This is up at 30,000 feet. Shows the polar front jet way up in Canada like what we do expect. And then it dips way down into the eastern U.S., which is kind of unusual. But Texas is right in the middle between that and the upper level ridge, which extends from Arizona up to British Columbia. The ridge is not in the area, so we're not seeing 100 degree weather, that kind of thing. Winds are pretty weak, so we're not seeing much in the way of organized storms. But we may get a little bit of that tomorrow. Storms may be organizing just a little bit across maybe northern Texas. Mostly, I, I would think, maybe east of I-35, where the better moisture is. And the direction of the winds is from the northeast, and it becomes easterly out across West Texas. So storms are going to be moving kind of unusual. We may see southwest west or westerly movement, you know, like east to west, which is kind of kind of weird, but we do see that in the summertime sometimes. Going into Thursday, flow weakens quite a bit. The stronger stuff stays mostly up in Nebraska, so kind of a reprieve going into Thursday and Friday. Then for Saturday, it looks like a new push coming stronger upper level winds. I don't know if we're going to have the moisture in place, but we may see slightly increased chances of rain maybe Saturday and Sunday, mostly north of I-10, I-30, or not I-10, I-20 and I-30 along the Red River like 
kind of in this area. But on the whole, most of Texas should be in very good shape for the 4th of July weekend. Most of the problems will be in eastern Oklahoma into Arkansas, so in this area. And looking out into the Atlantic, looks pretty clear. This is the area that we watch for possible thunderstorm, or not thunderstorm, but tropical storm activity. Got a couple of easterly waves, but they're not very well developed, so we're looking pretty good. NHC kind of sees the same thing, not much in the way of tropical cyclone activity, so it looks to be overall a very quiet pattern, uh, not much in the way of, of any organized weather this upcoming week. And that's the forecast there. As far as what I'm going to be doing this evening, digital atmosphere. I've got my source code set up here. I've got my dite, duct pepper, and uh, music and all that. I'm probably going to be up to 1 or 2 in the morning. There's a lot of code to go through here. This is like thousands of lines of Delphi code. and I'm trying to get the some of the radar modules, uh, some of the new dual pole stuff working cleanly. So I'll be working on that and hopefully get this out by the weekend. I'm, I'm planning on, on that. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. Oh, look at that anvil cloud. These are from the storms near Waco.